Hello everyone, welcome back to the chemical engineering channel and as you know that we are following the module of heat transfer operation these days and in this regard we are bringing the lecture number 9. In today's course proceeding we will be doing an analysis of heat exchangers. It will be a generic analysis and we will discuss the various type of equations which have been used for the analysis. So before starting this tutorial if you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe the channel, click the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. So in analysis, if you talk about the heat exchangers, these are commonly used in practice even if it's a small facility or it's a large processing facility, heat exchangers are commonly used and a design engineer or a chemical engineer often finds himself or herself in a position to select a heat exchanger which will provide or which will achieve number one, the specified temperature change in a fluid stream of known mass flow rate. Number two, predict the outlet temperatures of the hot and cold streams in a specified heat exchanger. So these are the two possibilities for which the heat exchanger has to be selected. And again, there are different types of heat exchangers as we have discussed in our previous lecture that it's double pipe, compact heat exchangers, then shell and tube heat exchanger, plate or frame heat exchangers. So we have discussed the various types. In doing this analysis, two types of methods are commonly used. Number one is the log mean temperature difference, which is LMTD. And number two is effectiveness NTU method. However, we will be limited to their names in this lecture. And in the next lecture, we will be discussing the LMTD. And then subsequent lectures, we will be discussing the effectiveness NTU method. Heat exchangers, they usually operate for a longer period of time without any certain or substantial change in their operational conditions. That is why they are modeled as the steady flow once we are doing the analysis of the heat exchangers. Then the mass flow rate of each fluid remains constant. Obviously, in a heat exchanger, there is a hot fluid and there is a cold fluid. Hot fluid is that fluid which loses heat during the process and cold fluid gains heat during the process. So both of the fluids, the mass flow rate will remain the same. The fluid properties will remain the same, such as temperature and velocity at inlet or outlet remain the same. Also, the fluid stream experienced little or no change in the velocities and elevations. Accordingly, the kinetic and potential energies are negligible. However, the specific heat that is dependent on the temperature, as we have discussed before, that for real gases, or for the real systems, this parameter is dependent on the temperature but not on the pressure. However, in a specified range, we can treat this one as a constant value like if you assume water and if you take an example of like for water 20 to 50 degrees centigrade, then usually we assume a CP value of 4.18 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. However, this value might slightly fluctuate so we may Consider it constant with a little loss in the accuracy. Also, the axial heat conduction along the tube is usually insignificant and can be considered negligible. Then, the surface of the heat exchanger, the outer surface is considered as insulated, means there will be no heat loss to the surrounding medium and any heat transfer occurs between the two fluids only. It means the amount of heat lose by the hot stream should be equal to the amount of heat gained by the cold stream. So this balance is only possible once there is no heat loss or no heat leak in the system, the properties are constant. So under these assumptions, we have come to the conclusion according to the first law of thermodynamics that Q is equal to MCP dt for the cold stream, Q is equal to M of C cold stream flow rate Cp of C specific heat of cold stream, Tc out temperature of cold stream which is at outlet of the exchanger, Tc in temperature of cold stream which is at the inlet and on the other hand Q is equal to MH, Cph, M and Cp again the same nomenclature Th in in this case and in this case it will be Th out. So this will be in minus out and for this it will be out minus in because out will be higher than in and here in is greater than out and this value according to second law of thermodynamics it will always be in the direction from hot stream to the cold stream it's always a positive quantity its direction is understood to be from the hot fluid to the cold one in accordance with the second law of thermodynamics it is often convenient to combine these two parameters which is mcp so that will become as the heat capacity 
flow rate and that is denoted as capital C. So C of H is equal to M of H multiplied by CP of H. Similarly, C of C is equal to M of C, CP of C. And this heat capacity flow rate or heat capacity rate, it represents the rate of heat transfer which is required or which is needed to raise the temperature of a fluid stream. If it is a cold stream, then by 1 degree centigrade. On the other hand, it will be loose by the 1 degree centigrade if it's a cold stream as it flows through a heat exchanger. And if this value is higher, it means there will be minimum change in the temperature because this value higher means that the mass flow rate is higher and once the mass flow rate is higher for example if we double the mass flow rate then the temperature change will be halved like for example if we have 1000 kg per hour of flow rate and the temperature change is 20 degree centigrade now if we increase the flow rate to 2000 kg per hour means we have doubled the amount that amount will be halved so it will be 10 degree centigrade temperature change so fluids with the large heat capacity rate will experience a small temperature change and the fluid with a small heat capacity rate will experience a large temperature change. So accordingly, the correlation which we have seen earlier that is Q is equal to MCPDT has become Q is equal to C of C, TC out minus TC in or for other side Q is equal to C of H, TH in minus TH out. Now if we look at this graph, this relation shows this one is the hot fluid line. This is the cold fluid line. It is assumed that the C which is the heat capacity flow rate or we can say in other language C of H is equal to C of C. So the temperature difference of hot fluid should be equal to the temperature difference of the cold fluid because this is relation Q is equal to Q. So C of H T of H in minus T of H out is equal to this parameter. So this temperature change will be equal like if the temperature change here is 25 degree centigrade the temperature change here will also be 25 degree centigrade if these C's are constant in the system. Note that the only time the temperature rise of a cold fluid is equal to the temperature drop of the hot fluid is when the heat capacity rates of the two fluids are equal to each other. So now we will move to another applicability that is the two special types of heat exchangers are commonly used in the practice. These are the condensers and boiler. Obviously in these two equipments or these two types the phase change is involved. In condensers obviously condensation takes place. Fluid is converted from vapor to liquid and in boiler it is converted from liquid to vapor. So for the phase state system we will define Q is equal to M H of F G where M is the rate of vaporization or condensation of the fluid and H F of G is the enthalpy of vaporization of the fluid at specified temperature or pressure. An ordinary fluid absorbs or releases a large amount of heat essentially at constant temperature during a phase state process. We have already discussed that the amount of heat involved during the phase change process is the latent heat and that during the phase change process there will be no temperature change. The temperature change occurs during the sensible heat gain or loss process. So the rate of heat transfer in a heat exchanger can be expressed using the Newton's law of cooling as Q is equal to UA dt as we have discussed in convection principle as well where U is equal to overall heat transfer coefficient, A is equal to exchanger area or heat transfer area Delta T M is the appropriate average temperature difference between the two fluids. Usually the value of A can be found out by the dimensions of the heat exchanger so that will remain the constant. However, the U and Delta T M will not remain the constant and across the length of the tube it will vary and obviously we have to select suitable value and in that case in Delta T minimum usually we use a parameter of log mean temperature difference. So we will define that parameter in our upcoming lecture but in that case we are simply limited to that equation which is shown to you and we have defined the parameters involved in it. So log mean temperature difference which is LMTD we will be discussing it in the next lecture and why we use LMTD for the heat exchangers and not the average temperatures we will discuss in the upcoming lecture. So that's it from this lecture thank you so much please do watch like share the video and subscribe to the channel also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel till then it's goodbye stay tuned